Hey there, it's Sandy Alnock, and while I am back from my trip to Pennsylvania, I am still sharing some art that was made beforehand, because, you know, when you go on a trip, it takes a while to get back with your feet under you, so here's another video that I had shot before I left. I'll show you how I watercolored it and talk through some of the pen and ink. So for this piece, I'm working in a sketchbook and it's a uh, Arches cold press sketchbook. And I'll put links to all the supplies in the doobly-doo down below. Now, one of the things that you'll see here in this palette is the light blue blob, the one that I'm painting with right now, is iridescent electric blue. I did some swaps in my palette. I know I don't usually do that till the first of the year, but I had noticed there were a bunch of colors that hadn't been used, and iridescent electric blue is one that is now back in my palette. I had it in there years ago, and I realized that I missed having a bright color. This is one, it's, you know, iridescent, so it's it's one that's in the iridescent slash duochrome kinds of colors, but this one only looks like it's got some shimmer to it when you use it really thick. So you can use it as an accent on top of something if you would like in order to really pop up the shimmer. The other colors that you're going to see used here are somewhat from that puddle that's, well, you can't see the puddle that I'm dipping from right now, um, but it's taking the colors that you do see in those two big wells and mixing them with some transparent red oxide. And then some of the transparent red oxide is making it into those puddles up there. Those were from the Santa Claus painting that I had done a little bit ago. And yes, this was filmed back in that time frame because I was getting just so much done and scheduled, plus a whole bunch of work ready to put in my shop for the Black Friday sale. So yes, this is a bit of a flashback to that. Hopefully this one sold, but if not, I'm going to link to it in the doobly-doo if you're interested in picking it up. Uh, but the colors that are up there were, I believe, Prussian blue, Indian throne, uh, phthalo blue, turquoise, or maybe it was just phthalo blue, and some cascade green. So there was just a whole bunch of mess up there and I hate throwing away good paint. So I often will try to find some subjects that I can use that paint for. And the Kingfisher seemed like it would be one that would fit that bill. Get it fit the bill while I'm painting the bill. Look at me making a timely joke. If you have a lot of palette juice in your palette and you want to paint something that will use it up, find a subject that has some neutrals in it, whether it's wood or barns or, you know, something brown, because you can always mix browns and grays out of anything that's in your palette. Just look for the complement of that color. So that's where mixing browns with these blues came in and turned into colors that I could use to paint that stump with. And then I had all of these beautiful dark blues that I could start adding layers and start building up the richness and the value in the face and the head of the kingfisher as well as the whole body. Um, if you are you know, trying to make them into a green, then you'll, you can just add greens to something, but you need to choose a subject that's going to have more desaturated colors when you're just mixing palette juice together into, you know, just whatever is gonna be usable for your painting. And it helps if your subject matter is maybe something rusty or the side of a barn or, you know, tree bark, those kinds of things. Sometimes you can do it with animals because animals generally will have a number of different kinds of dark browns and grays and those sorts of things with them and that sort of stuff. So, you know, think about what you can use those colors for, not just what is a blue item, if you have a bunch of blue like I do, but what can you use those for in addition to it? And when I found this reference that had, you know, a really nice brown stump for the bird to sit on, I figured that would be just perfect. So I was here refining the shape of the back. My sketch that I had done in pencil didn't quite capture some of the undulations of the back and where the wing kind of comes down. So I don't wed myself to my sketches. You know, my sketches are there just to give me some general guidelines. I'm really looking at 
what it is that's coming out of it as opposed to whether or not you know my line is there and a lot of us get really stuck on well I drew it that way so that's how it has to be no it isn't you can change that anytime your watercolor will generally cover it unless you're using a super pale type of color so that will will give you quite a bit to work with so as I kept working my way through it notice I haven't stopped to dry anything I'm just using wet in wet over top of each of these areas because that's going to give me the ability to have some of these sections that will blend into others. And when you're talking bird feathers, a lot of times you'll have one half of the bird feather is very sharp and has a lot of detail and the other half just starts melting into other colors. Now don't get scared here, but I noticed that there was a really big shadow across the bird. and that shadow needed to be good and dark. It needed to have some value to it. And look at how all of a sudden the back of the head of the bird just, just lit up. But it lit up in contrast to what was already there. So I'm using some more of the leftover paint that's on my palette to finish out adding in some details. And then I got out my new dip pen. And this one, I, Actually, I don't know when this video is getting scheduled for, so maybe I've used it already, but I'll tell you about it anyway. When I posted my gift guide, which you can still shop from, it's still there on the art-classes.com website. Uh, when I did that, I invited a couple of other artists who are students in, in classes to share their ideas for what you might want to get for Christmas for someone else or that they could get for you. And Kelly mentioned having dip pens and she was really into dip pens instead of all the pens that I talked about in my classes and I was like oh man I need to learn about dip pens and I started asking her questions and then she you know told me which pens that she uses and which nibs because I had gotten glass pens I had gotten like you know nice cheap types of, of dip pens because there's a gajillion of them and I never found them to be comfortable to draw with just never did well, Kelly recommended this one that is actually cheaper than all these glass pens that I've gone through. And the glass pens, just the tips of them just kept chipping on me and then they were useless to draw with. This one is really nice and it's just a few bucks. And pair that with a couple of nibs and you're in business. I can now draw in other inks that I don't want to clean a pen for. Because cleaning a pen is kind of a pain in the butt when you're trying to completely clean it, not just, you know clean it enough to um, to put in more of the same ink but if you want to change colors entirely and put a, a pink ink into a pen that had black in it you've got to really clean it really well and now I don't have to because I have this pen it feels nice in my hand it does feel a little lightweight so she had another recommendation that I'm going to save up for and potentially try because I want something that feels a little more substantial because I like something like that. This one does also roll on my desk. So I need to figure out whether or not I need to just have a little dish to lean it on so it stays in place or if a different pen will just stay put. Uh, hard to say what which one will be the outcome of that, but I'll let you know when the time comes and I figure out something else. But I can definitely recommend this one. It's, it's for comic artists, so it's like really cheap and uh, yeah so I am adding a lot of detail I added a bunch into the feathers I'm adding a bunch into the wood now just letting my pen run around I'm not looking at the picture for this I'm letting my pen run around the watercolor and see how I can create shapes around it and depending on the kind of bark that you're creating sometimes there's just little sections and everything is divided into small sections sometimes it's long types of striations and and that sort of thing in the wood itself and you know in innumerable ways that you can actually draw all of that but this one was a really fun one and uh, gave me some chance to play with this new pen which I found pretty cool so big thanks to Kelly Joe and all of the artists who contributed to that gift guide I'll link to that as well as uh this one over in my shop in case it's still available if you want to pick up this little kingfisher all right i will see you again soon hopefully with some fresh uh mojo
We'll see if I'm back in action or if you'll st still keep seeing old pieces for a little bit yet. Thanks so much. Hit the subscribe button as well as the like button. Really helps the channel out. I'll see you next time.